Hey folks, Quillyteen here, and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Kerbal Space Program. It is the experimental build for version 1.2, and 1.2 includes some new satellite stuff with the need to have a satellite network in place. So that's what we're going to do today, because we've got a couple of missions to um, install some satellites. We're going to start with this one, Equatorial Orbit of uh, Kerbin. So this is the satellite we have to launch now. So it's mostly equatorial, which is actually kind of nice and handy for us to do. The problem here is that it's quite high up. I mean, we did just reach the moon, which was fine, but that's only like sort of one half of the orbit. Then to circularize there would take a fair amount of delta V. So we need a good amount of delta V to get here, but not a ridiculous amount. One of the nice things about satellites is they are extraordinarily light. So we're going to start a new project over here. Um, and we're going to do and dismiss those in our contract here. Unmanned, so this is the equatorial orbit of Kerbin. Unmanned probe that has an antenna and can generate power. Has to have a thermometer and then maintain stability. Okay, so we know we have to include a thermometer, but we don't want that anyway because it's a really easy way. You get missions from time to time. In fact, we've got one now to uh, return science from, from space around Kerbin. I thought. Oh, we actually just completed that. I forgot because we brought some home. But... If you get those missions a lot to return science from orbit around Kerbin, and it doesn't actually have to bring back any science points worth, right? So what we can do is you can take the temperature, transmit that, and even if it's worth zero science points, it still counts as sending science from orbit, which makes sense. You want these continuous, um, um, you know, temperature scans. Makes perfect sense. So I don't know what, you know... I guess, oh, here's one thing I want to get a check. What kind of signal strength does the command module have? Oh, yeah, it doesn't transmit anything. Data transmitter can't transmit science. It has a power of 5K. And it had a signal almost all the way to the moon. So then presumably, presumably, the communitron will easily be able to send a signal um, from relatively high Kerbin orbit since it has a power of 500K as opposed to 5k. So we don't, still don't know exactly what the numbers represent, but there we go. It'd be nice to have a sheer distance, but that should technically work. Certainly we need the ability to generate power so that we last longer. I'm going to put the quad solar panels and we will need some power as well that sticks around. Do I put it on top or the bottom? I put it on bottom like that. There we go. So this is going to be our satellite. There is a reaction control system within this probodobodyne, so it can rotate itself, which is great. Uh, now we need some fuel. Now we don't have the tiny little fuel tanks, which is a little bit disappointing. So we got to put this, and we don't have the tiny little engine, which would be a hell of a lot nicer to get a ridiculous amount of delta V. Actually, you know what? I think that. I think that. There we go. That's going to be our satellite there. And actually, to avoid a little bit more shadows, I'm going to put that over here like this. So we've got the temperature, we've got a battery pack so that we can survive when we're in the shadows. Although we're going to be in such high orbit that the amount of time we're going to be eclipsed by Kerbin is going to be microscopic. And we've got this antenna, which presumably will work. Can my voice get any higher? Filled with doubt. All right, stack decoupler. Um, and this is going to be the scent stage, which I think... There's going to be plenty of thrust there to lift this. Let's check our weight. Yep, this is going to be well above a um, uh, the 1.2 that we look for. Now, we do not have the procedural nose cone. So, aerodynamically, this is not the greatest. I guess what I could do is put the antenna on the side here. This is not... Uh, it's, I don't think it's physics enabled, so I think it can fit there just fine. And then we could stick a nose cone on top of here. Now, I could put a decoupler flipped around the other way over here so that we can detach the nose cone and lower our weight. Which I think we will do. I mean, the decoupler itself has some weight that we're going to have to haul um, into, well, out of the atmosphere. So I just flip that around to do that. But this will give us more delta V in our actual primary stage over here. So, for the staging... We want that. I'll probably manually decouple this when I feel that I'm high enough that we don't have to worry about the um, the air anymore. All right. It's not the same as a fairing, 
but I think it'll get the job done. So let's call this one the sat, whoops, the sat one. It's cheap, it's only 7,000. So can it get to the orbit that we're looking for? Let's cross our fingers. We're also gonna verify, although I'm pretty sure that this was going, yeah, okay, it's going counterclockwise, which is our normal, ooh, nice and wobbly, which is our normal path for this, so that's good. So SAS turn on, throttle up, um, now it has, does it have a built in, it has a built in short range antenna. So we're receiving data. So we get our signal, we get our commands from there. We've got four bars. So without extending this, all probes have a little antenna built in. So we don't have to extend this one out yet. All right, let's go. I don't have any fins, but that should be actually surprisingly okay. Because we're going into such a high orbit, we can go much more vertical uh, than normal because like we're targeting a very high apoapsis, like 5 million or whatever it was, right? Yeah, 5.2 million. So we can launch basically straight vertical, which makes it a little bit less problematic for us. And we'll just slowly tick over. But we really don't need to gravity turn, gravity turn much at all. We certainly do not have to go outside of our, um, our prograde marker. So hopefully this is light enough that we get plenty of power here. I'm not 100% confident, but we'll see. So yeah, mostly I'm going to try to keep it within the prograde. I will go ahead and just shift over a little bit. But the advantage of going straight vertical here for longer than normal is we do escape the atmosphere a little bit sooner. So if you're looking to achieve an orbit with as little delta V as possible, you do want to go um, you do want to go horizontal sooner so that you can circularize more easily. But since we're not just looking for an orbit, we're looking for a very high orbit. It's perfectly fine that we go relatively vertical here. So yeah, at this point I'd, I'd be targeting around 45 degrees, but that's okay. So we've got a long way to go before we have to worry about going too far sideways, so that's gonna be all right. But we can go and shuff down now. Just about ready to eject this. And when we do, we'll also be perfectly happy to go completely sideways here. Okay, there we go. Let's decouple that. Oh, that is less than ideal. I should have decoupled after after we stop this engine. Kill the throttle. Do that. Get away. There we go. <laughs> All right, that could have been handled better. So we still have good signal, but I will extend the antenna, which will give us, you know, guaranteed stronger signal all the way. So the only thing is that I don't know is how much delta V do we have in this stage? It should be relatively light, but not, you know, not quite as light as I would ultimately enjoy. We have a timer here. Yeah, one minute. I think I'm going to start the burn basically now because we do need to raise the apoapsis. That's the one penalty. Normally, starting your burn early for circularization means you raise your apoapsis, therefore you're wasting some of your delta V that you would like to use circular, circularizing. But here it's gonna be okay, because we're gonna raise this. And this, this spot where we are now is gonna become our periapsis. And we gotta raise both ends of it, so it's gonna be okay. All right. Now, I don't think we've got enough. I was a little concerned about that to start off with, but maybe, because now it's going to grow like crazy mad. Crazy mad. It's going to start bulging out, and then we're going to kill it soon. Best place to raise the apoapsis is from the parry, but again, we knew that spot was going to become the parry. Do something like that. Are we, um... Eh, we're pretty good there. So I'm not going to go all the way here, because... Well, no, it would be more efficient if I did I was going to say, because if I don't burn with great um, efficiency over here, we'll end up raising it a little bit more. But there, that's going to be close enough for what Kerbal wants. And we're going to add a maneuver over here, actually use one. And see how we're like a little off here? So that's going to be comboed 
with a little bit of that. And like that. There we go. So do we have 347 meters per second delta V left in the tank? No idea. No idea whatsoever. Electrical charge should be good, though. Okay, let's warp to here. And signal is still strong. Kerbin Harvester Massive. KSC. Oh, yeah. So it's the different signals. So there's they've got stations all over Kerbin, which is nice. So we're not always talking to the KSC directly, but we do have a direct connection to the ground one way or to other. Warp a little closer. Burn time's going to be pretty short. But yeah, I don't know. I have no idea. Time warping. Mm, time warp's so slow. I'm, I'm nervous. Well, worst case scenario, we have, you know, an extra satellite to build our network on. All right, let's face ourselves the right way here first. There we are. And time warp some more. So we're still 20 minutes away. 19, 18, 17. Sorry, I'm not talking. I'm just focusing. I don't want to overshoot again. Okay, I'm going to kill that, quick save, and then time warp again a little closer. And pretty good. Okay. You're facing the node with an estimated burn time of 23 seconds. We want to start our burn at about, I don't know, 11-ish seconds, 12-ish seconds. I think when it says 11 seconds left is when we want to start the burn for maximum perfection and efficiency. I don't know. The other thing is we'll probably get a mission at some point to re or to change our orbit of one of our existing satellites. Oh, I gotta start the burn. Stop talking. Start the burn. Oh, actually, the estimated burn time changed. We've got lots of fuel though, because um, I was gonna say you send it up with extra delta v so you can make those adjustment missions, which is really nice. Uh, but we didn't really have the means to send up a huge delta v satellite over here. I suspect we are in position. There we go. Position maintained. Bunch of money. Wonderful. So we've got our satellite. Sat1 is in orbit. Strong signal, all four bars. I wonder if I click on this. No, we're not getting any stats. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to quick stave. Quick stave, yes. I'm going to retract this antenna. 66%. That's with the built-in. Does this one have the built-in five strength as well? I'll have to double check, but it still has a signal here. Okay, so this Communitron, clearly, with its 500k power, can reach the moon. So I'm starting to wonder if, like, can we treat that as, like, 500,000 kilometers max range signal? I don't know. So we're at 100%, 6 million meters which is only 600,000 kilometers. At 600,000 kilometers, my 500k signal is still at 100%. So I don't know, I don't know what the ratio is. We'll have to we'll have to see. I'm sure someone's going to work out all the math and figure out all the ranges for us, which is going to be really handy. But in any case, right now we're good. Woot! Turn off the SAS. We could even start the satellite tumbling if we wanted, but it doesn't matter cuz as soon as we leave, it's going to kill all the physics so the tumbling won't be a thing um although in theory it would be better if we were facing normal or anti-normal because otherwise it would technically be possible for us to come back to the satellite let's do a little time warp here just to kill all the physics acceleration come back to the satellite and have the front end or the rear end pointed directly at the sun which would mean we'd get no power at all not until the like we orbit around a little bit more but this way one of our solar panels will always be um, at least indirectly facing the sun in some way. Worst case scenario, we get a 45 degree angle uh, going on our solar panel, but we'd have two of them, so it still works out to a one. Okay, very good. Space Center. All right, we're learning about antennas. So we have another mission to put a satellite in polar orbit around the moon. Any other interesting missions here? A oh, polar orbit around Kerbin. Actually, I'm gonna do that one first. Now, two things. One, this is a slightly higher orbit, right? It's 6.7 and 8.3, not much more. We could easily reach an orbit of that diameter with our current satellite. That would be fine. 
except this being a polar orbit means we do not get the initial kickstart of the Earth's orbit to launch us, which means we need a lot more delta V to actually reach that, significantly more. There's absolutely no way that this can pull it off. But we do have the fuel valves now, so what we can do is do some asparagus staging. So what we're going to do is grab this, stick that, say, here with the mirror on, and we're going to grab the big fuel tank here. Um, actually, we could definitely put even more than this on here. So we want this to be higher up. And then another fuel tank at the bottom like that. You always want your decoupler to be at the top of these things so that it shoots the top of it away. Um, and we want to go ahead and stage into there. And then we don't need more gimbling, so we can use the more efficient Reliant engines over here. As long as all three engines are lit from the start, then you still get to use the gimbling from there to make it work out. I'm just going to bring this up to be more level. I could save a couple of bucks by replacing these four FL400 tanks with two FL800 tanks, but that's going to be okay. Uh, we want going to want some nose cones on the side, and we need to change our staging. Oh, yeah, so you go there. So all three engines light at the same time. These side um, tanks feed into the middle one. We need to make sure we've got some struts here to keep the bottom in place. That should be plenty. Although, you know, if I have any concern about some of the stability here, what I could also do is maybe, oops. Can I start it from here? No, not really, huh? Let's start it from here and see if we can find a good place to attach. There we go. More struts, always more gooder. Very much more gooder. And why don't we go ahead and get a launch assist bit over here. So this should get us a lot more Delta V. Probably way too much power at launch. Oh, we've got too many parts, 35 parts. And our vehicle assembly, oh, I should have called this SAT 2. Well, it's basically the same as SAT 1, but with extra boost. I'm going to upgrade this. This is where you sink a lot of your money, but we're making good money from our satellite contracts, so now we can have more parts in our VAB. We have to double check the contract to make sure that it doesn't need any special parts. New unmanned probe, antenna can generate power, designated orbit. It doesn't even need a science experiment, but I'm going to leave the thermometer on there anyway. Um, we actually have a lot more power here to the point where we can put a heavier load in easily, easily. So I'm going to go and replace that with a FL400 tank. There we go, like that. It's going to have a lot more Delta V up here, and we're easily going to be able to send this up. We're actually going to have to throttle down our initial ascent considerably because these three engines will give us redonkulous thrust. In fact, I could save some of our weight, therefore getting more Delta V if I took some of the engine off, but I don't think just the middle one would be enough. So we'll do that. Okay, you need to change up. I think what we'll do is we'll do the classic sort of start where you initiate the engines first and then release after a moment. You don't really need to do that in Kerbal Space Program, especially with the liquid engines, but in reality, you have to start the engines first to make sure everything's got a solid burn on and that it's even so you don't go sideways, and then you let go. If you ever play with the Realism mod, it becomes incredibly important to do that. All right, I think, I think that's good. We can probably send this into polar orbit. So we're going to go to launch, but before we launch, and this is very important, so we're going to go out, we're going to go out here, yes, English. We're going to look at the orbit. So you can see it goes in this way for now, but depending on how we launch, we're going to want to go in a different direction. The other thing we want to do is we want to make sure that where we launch, which is here, is lined up with this. And so we're going to line up over here and we're going to have to launch going south. Or we could wait until we're on the opposite side until we rotate around over here and then we'd launch going north. But as is, the soonest thing we can do is fast forward here. Just keep it sort of lined up. Uh, a little more. It will take us a little while to get up, so we don't have to be right aligned. I can't remember if we want to be slightly before, or slightly after, but I, I think we want to get a little closer. The orbit itself keeps shifting a little too. Okay. That's pretty close. So we're going to take off, and again, let's verify this. We're taking off and going south. Yes, we're going south from here. Okay, so SAS is going to turn on. Throttle is going to be set to full to start off with. I'm going to hit spacebar, then quickly I'm going to hit spacebar a second time. 
Oh, we're still getting a little bit of sideways drift. I probably should have had a second docking clamp on there, but that's okay. So, now... Oh, yeah, we definitely have to throttle down. There we go. Much more manageable. We're going to want to start going south, which is up on the nav ball here. Start the gravity turn. And again, actually, we don't need the gravity turn too extremely because we're going quite high up. This is going to be a little tricksy. But I mean, a gravity turn is still good, don't get me wrong. It's just the last time, especially with the fins, and I don't have the fins now, and actually I forgot that two of these engines don't gimbal. And as such, our ability to steer and control is not quite what I was looking for. Uh, we are going too fast. What I should have done is downrated the two outer engines. So that my I could still run it full throttle, so therefore I would get the full gimbling effect. Okay. Now I actually like our angle. Again, we'll be circularizing, well, in if we want, a little lower, but more optimally. I'm just looking at the nav ball here. I'm not steering from anything up here. I should put some lights on the outside. I gotta remember to do that when I'm not I don't have my mods. And we're going to stage soon. I'm gonna try to be right in the prograde when we do that. To minimize the chance of collision. And there we go. Good stuff. Okay, how are we looking here? Not quite space bound yet, but we've got all this is full now. And we used this to take off last time. Now it's still full and we're a good way up. So you can see the um, our orbital direction is a little bit different because of the twisting of the Earth. So I'm going to keep trying to push us this way for straight south. But mostly nothing else. I think I'm going to keep this 45 degree angle. And I'm going to face the south in that ball. But again, because of the rotation of the Earth, this gets a little thrown off. And I'm sure there's a better way to do this, because when I get here, I will have to twist to, to fix things. Alright, there's basically no atmosphere, which means... Which means... Uh, actually, I'll wait until we get... There we go. Get it to shoot away properly now. Let's do this, which will help flatten things out. All right, let's see what we can do. Man, it is dark. Pretty sky, though. We are in space. We're pushing up the apoapsis. Still generally going south. We'll be a little off kilter, but it's not going to be too bad to fix. Stage view. Just taking a look at the fuel as is, so that we know when we're going to have to stage. I don't think I can stage from here, though. That's probably true. Well, we'll hear it when it runs out. So basically, I'm just going to burn through the stage as is, unless there's going to be an overshot. But I'm going to let it go, going to the horizon. But I think we're about to run out. And then we'll take a look and reevaluate. Uh, so periapsis is almost out as is. Okay, there we go. There's the stage. So I'm going to do that that again and then just kill that and we're past our periapsis so I think what I'm going to do is just wait no well, you know what's fine actually we got to stop we can't go quite all the way up because we're gonna have to make some adjustments and that is going to mess with our apple apps so we're going to do that um, and at some point now, I can't lock onto this to find out where my correct descending and ascending node is, which is too bad. I'm just going to go ahead and warp to the other side. And then... Oh, 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 oh. Oh, we still have good signal. Actually, what are we talking to? Direct connection to the space center. It would have been interesting, and I guess that'll always be the case, because we'll never be out of range. But it'd be interesting if we'd gotten a connection to the other satellite for a little while. Okay, uh, so yeah, we've extended that, so I can just warp to here again. And we're just going to, like, get an orbit that's an orbit, and then we'll try to fix it. This is not the most efficient way of doing it, but it'll mostly work. 
just do a little time warp to stop that acceleration a little easier. Okay. We're not quite at the apoapsis, but that's okay. So get something that's roughly circular. It'll also make it easier because really you want to burn through the pole, I think, to fix your normal anti-normal, which is what we're going to have to do to twist our orbit correctly. All right. So what I want to do is somewhere over here, I want to add a maneuver. And the core of the maneuver is going to be that. There we go. But we can also do a little bit of growth. It'll raise both the apo and the peri, which is OK. There we are. And then we'll plan another maneuver actually right here that will involve what we're looking for for the final correction. We've got lots of fuel. Everything is fine. And a quick save before doing a big time warp. If I click past here, I can say warp to next maneuver. Doesn't always work exactly like you want, but I think in this case it is going to be okay. I love watching the uh, the constellation of the uh, the signals going. One of my favorite parts of playing with remote tech back in the day. Okay, that's going to go there. Warps us one minute to the maneuver, which is perfectly fine. At these distances, it's not going to make a huge difference one way or the other. Go for the burn. Feel the burn. And whoop. Um, that's, you know what, that's going to be good enough. So now what I want to do is another burn. So we're over here. Just grow that out and we'll check to see if we need to make any correction using a radial anti-radial. And no, we don't. Anything like that, that's going to be good enough to satisfy the contract and leave us with some extra fuel. So again, quick save into warp to next maneuver. Vroom. Groovy. And find the maneuver. Give me a short burn. Just a little time warp, anti time warp, just to stop the rotation a little more conveniently. Chase that maneuver a little bit. But there we go. That should be plenty good. Maintain stability for 10 seconds, because we've reached the designated polar orbit. Just wait for it, and there we go. Bam! And between these two, we actually have some really good connection possibilities. The polar one is quite nice, because it really minimizes the odds of being um, eclipsed. Now, there's not, a there's not a massive amount of range on this. This is still just the communitron, but this is almost certainly going to give us perfect connection between these two within our local system. Clearly, we're going to need the high gain antenna if we're going to start to interact with like going to um, Duna or something like that. But that will have to wait until another go. So there we go. Two successful contracts done. Again, we might get some contracts to reposition the satellites later on. And hopefully it's the polar one because it actually has uh, whoops, wrong click. It actually has a lot of delta V left. That's not where I want to go. I want to go look at the missions. Most likely our next missions will be to land on Minmus or Mars. Ooh, explore Kerbin. It's called Explore Kerbin, but it's the Rendezvous. Rendezvous two vessels in Urban and Kerbin, which actually will combo very well with one of our rescues. We got another satellite mission. If you need more money to upgrade your buildings, this is the way to do it. I mean, it's always been the way to do it, is you run these satellite missions and you can get a ridiculous amount of cash. And now it's more fun because you do get the antenna stuff. But I think with an... Um, and really, if you want... If line of sight matters for your satellite network, you need at least three with a very careful um, uh, configuration or four with a slightly more uh, lenient configuration, but they need to be in a, they don't need to be geosynchronous, like they don't need to be, or geostationary, they don't have to be geostationary, but they have to be um, in a synchronous orbit, so they have exactly the same orbital time to keep their configuration properly. And built into Kerbal Space Program, you don't actually get the information as to what your orbital time is. And maybe from the tracking station. Hold on. If I were to click on one of these satellites, uh, I thought there was a little panel with some extra info. There we go. Can we get... No. Let's get altitude, velocity, flight time. But yeah, you need something that tells you, like, exactly how long does it take us to go around Kerbin. And what you do is you get your satellites. And again, you can do three. Now, again, in remote tech, it's important because of line of sight and different things like that. Um, you can get three in sort of a triangle pattern that can talk to each other and then also have signal out or four in a square pattern or, or I mean any real shape 
but like three or four tends to be what people set up. And as long as the satellites have exactly the same orbital time as each other, then they will always be the same distance away from each other. Well, that's not true because they might not be perfectly circular orbits and they might drift a little closer and a little further apart, but they will never drift out of their constellation, barring the fact that there's some rounding errors in the math because of floating points and whatever. But I mean, even real satellites don't end up being precise. They have to be adjusted from time to time. It doesn't help that there's not a pure vacuum in real space, so you need a little bit of adjustment, but that'll mostly get you there. Still, this is a pretty good base for our current satellites that I am quite keen and happy with. Um, what? Do we have another satellite mission? What's this one? That must be another contract that we have. Or it's a it's a proposed contract. That's what's going on there, I think. But um, I think we're going to not do that. And I think we're going to go for a landing next time. Although it would be fun to play more probe stuff. Like how do we get... Can we get to Duna with a probe? Probably... It would be better with, so these propulsion systems over here are interesting because most of the propulsion systems get bigger. These actually get smaller. It's a tiny little Oscar tank and a tiny little spark engine and also the tiny, tinier ant engine as well. But the Oscar tank here with this gives you such ridiculous Delta V. Super, They're super light and they're super efficient and this can give you like thousands and thousands of points of Delta V for your satellites, which are really good for the distant ones. Um, and even more if you go over here, this... Um, toroidal fuel tank also gives you some nice little small ones um these are monitor propellant ones there we go the spider tanks over here the twitch ones are actually quite good for landing on minmus actually but i think that'll be another thing so we don't have the uh, we don't have the points to unlock anything more anyway but um i think one way to get a heck of a lot of science will be to do our minmus and moon landings we'll also complete some more contracts and that should give us a lot of science for all the tech to start sending distant probes to do none. I think that's what we're going to aim for to really test the new um, connection system will be the idea of sending some sort of mission to Duna where we leave a satellite in orbit and then drop a probe down to the ground at the same time because that would be quite cool or there might be two parallel missions. We'll see how it goes. Thanks for watching though. See you next time.